I'm Professor Graham Yorston, and today I'm going to be discussing the work of two Italian psychiatrists, Ugo Cerletti and Lucio Bini. Electroconvulsive therapy, or shock treatment, has always been controversial. But as a psychiatrist, I know that people who are locked into the prison of deep, dark depression, not eating, not drinking, fading away in front of your eyes, they can be turned around in days. So, do you believe the movie version of ECT? Again. Or people who've actually had the treatment. ECT has actually given me my life back. So it's all the lights go on, you know, like it's, it's just wonderful, a wonderful procedure. Yeah, it, it saved my life and it, and it uh, saved my family. In order to judge whether ECT was a pioneering treatment, as I believe, or just another dark day for the disenfranchised. We need to understand the social and political background of mental health care in the 1930s. In the 1930s, Europe and the USA were struggling economically with the Great Depression, leading to a shortage in funding for health care alongside growing demand. The seemingly never-ending increase in numbers of people being admitted to psychiatric hospitals fueled the rise of the eugenics movement which led to forced sterilization being carried out in many countries and a mass euthanasia program in Nazi Germany that disposed of 300,000 inconvenient, unproductive, hungry mouths. In Mussolini's Italy, mental health facilities were underfunded and overcrowded and there was cultural stagnation amongst psychiatrists. In 1938, new racial laws led to the expulsion of academics and clinicians of Jewish ancestry, including the founder and editor of the journal which published, in one of its last issues, Cerletti and Bini's paper on electroshock. The desperation to find an effective solution to the problem of severe mental illness had led to the development of malaria treatment for neurosyphilis by Wagner Jauregg, insulin shock therapy for schizophrenia by Manfred Seikel and cardiazole or metrazole induced seizure therapy for schizophrenia by Lashlo Maduna. All of these treatments had successes, but all of them were dangerous with fatalities not uncommon, so finding a safer alternative was a priority. Cerletti and his team travelled to Budapest to meet Maduna and on their return to Rome they started using his techniques on their own patients. They also started experimenting with electricity to induce seizures in dogs and pigs. This went on for several years before they tried out the technique on a human subject in April 1938. A 40-year-old man with schizophrenia who had delusions, hallucinations and confusion and who, after a series of electroshocks, was returned to a normal state of mind. They reported their work at an academic meeting in Rome a few weeks later, even going so far as to demonstrate the technique to the audience. There were no outcome measures or statistics. The idea that inducing seizures would be of benefit to a patient with psychosis was so well established they didn't need any. Their innovation was simply the method of producing the seizure. Within a year, ECT was being tried in England, Holland and France, and in the US from 1940. By 1943, over 350 publications had already been published in different countries and languages. Quite remarkable given that the whole world was at war. The idea to use electricity in humans is said to have first come to Cerletti from watching pigs being anaesthetised with electroshock before being butchered. In one version of what happened, Cerletti went to a slaughterhouse to see how it was done. In another, it was Beanie who went. In yet another, nobody went anywhere near a slaughterhouse. So the whole story might be no more than a myth. 
we simply don't know. Cioletti did develop a theory that ECT caused the brain to produce vitalizing substances, which he called agroagonines, from the Greek words for extreme struggle. And he tried injecting patients with an extract of electroshocked pig brain. This never really caught on, but ECT did, and it soon replaced chemically induced seizures as it was cheaper, less dangerous, and patients preferred it to cardiazole or metrazole, as this was associated by an overwhelming sense of impending death just before the seizure onset, and post seizure agitation lasting for several hours. By contrast, patients who had ECT felt nothing, had no memory of the procedure, and were calm afterwards. Throughout the 1940s, there were few alternative treatments besides lobotomy. But when antipsychotic and antidepressant medication became available in the early 1950s, the use of ECT gradually diminished, and it slowly acquired its popular image of being a barbaric treatment meted out by cruel psychiatrists to patients whose only illness was not towing the line. Whatever your own views on the matter, it was Cerletti and Bini who started it all in 1938. Ugo Cerletti was born in 1877. He studied medicine in Rome and Turin and visited eminent neurologists and psychiatrists across Europe, including Kraepelin and Alzheimer in Germany. In 1935, he was appointed professor at the Department of Mental and Neurological Diseases at the University of Rome, La Sapienza. Lucio Bini did most of the work in designing and building the ECT machine, and it is his name alone that is on the patents. In the 1950s, the relationship between the two soured. Cerletti claimed full ownership of the research behind the invention, freezing out Bini to the point that when Cerletti died, Bini was not even mentioned in the major Italian newspapers as a contributor to the work. One member of the original research team said that Cerletti was envious of Bini's success and insisted that Bini was only a technician and that the whole thing had been his idea. Other members of the team defended Bini's contribution as being essential to the project. The dispute is reflected in the different names given to the ECT machine, either the Cerletti Bini or the Bini Cerletti. Cerletti certainly had the more distinguished career, publishing 113 original papers, including some in German, about neuropathology and psychiatry before his death in 1963. But as with all good mental health care, it was a team effort, and therefore it is both Ugo Cerletti and Lucio Bini who are my pioneers of psychiatry for today. Thank you for watching. If you want to hear more about people who've pushed back the frontiers of psychiatry, then please subscribe and click the notifications bell to be kept up to date with all the latest videos. Bye for now.